Hi, good day. Let us discuss about refraction and lenses. How does light travel? What happens to the ray of light when it passes through different media, say air to water? The pencil appears bent when it is partly submerged in water. This shows that light ray bends as it passes from air to water. The change in direction or the bending of light when it passes from one medium to another of different optical density is called refraction. Refraction also makes the water appear shallower. Because of refraction, a fish appears higher in the water when viewed from the bank than it actually is. A teaspoon placed in a glass of water appears to be bent or broken at the surface of the water. A coin placed in the bottom of a teacup out of the line of vision of an observer will become visible when the cup is filled with water. When light travels from air to water, its speed decreases. A medium is optically dense if it slows down the speed of light. Water is optically denser than air. When light travels from an optically less dense to denser medium at an angle, say from air to glass, light bends toward the normal. When light travels from a denser to a less dense medium at an angle, say from glass to air, the light bends away from the normal. The angle formed between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence. And the angle between the refracted and the normal is called the angle of refraction. Where does light travel fastest? The speed of light is different in almost transparent material. In a vacuum, the speed of light is about 3.0 times 10 raised to the 8 power meters per second. The ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to its speed in another substance is called the absolute index of refraction, or n for that substance. Or it is written as n is equal to c divided by v. So, if you know the index of refraction of a substance, you can determine the speed of light in that substance. Also, the higher the index of refraction, the slower the speed of light in the substance. This means that the higher the optical density of a substance, the higher is its index of refraction. Do you know what is the importance of the index of refraction? The index of refraction of a pure, transparent substance is a constant quantity which is a definite physical property of a substance. Hence, the identity of a substance can be determined by measuring its index of refraction. The very high index of refraction of diamond provides a positive test for its identification. What are the laws of refraction? The facts about refraction of light may be summarized in three laws of refraction. The incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal to the surface at the point of incidence are all in the same plane. The index of refraction to a particular substance is always a constant. When a ray of light passes at an angle from a medium of lesser to one of greater optical density, it is bent toward the normal. Conversely, a ray of light passing at an angle from an optically denser medium to a lesser medium is bent away from the normal ray. Let us discuss about total internal reflection. You already learned that as a ray of light passes from a medium of higher optical density, say water, into one of a lower optical density, say air, it is bent away from the normal. As the angle of incidence continues to increase, a value is finally reached at which the angle of refraction equals 90 degrees, and the refracted ray does not enter the air at all, but takes the path along the water surface. The angle of incidence in the denser medium resulting in angle of refraction at 90 degrees is called the critical angle, or IC. If the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle, total internal reflection occurs. Do you know why diamond is a very brilliant gem? It is because its index of refraction is high and its critical angle is very small. Very little of the light that enters a cut diamond passes through it. Most of the light is reflected internally. Fiber optics makes it possible to use light instead of electricity to transmit messages by total internal reflection. 
Optical fibers are also used in the field of medicine. An endoscope is an instrument used to explore the inside of the human body using the principle of total internal reflection. Let us discuss about lenses. What are lenses made of? Lenses are made of transparent substance like glass or plastic which can bend light rays. Lenses are of two kinds. Converging lens or convex which is thicker at the middle than at the edge. Diverging lens or concave which is thicker at the edge than at the middle. There are three types of converging lenses. Double convex, plano convex, and converging meniscus. For the diverging lenses, they can be classified into double concave, plano concave, and diverging meniscus. How do lenses refract rays of light? When light rays parallel to the principal axis pass through a converging lens, the rays are refracted towards the thicker part of the lens, and they all converge at the point called the real focus. However, parallel rays of light are spread out by diverging lens and appear to meet at the virtual focus. What are the different terms related to lenses? Spherical lenses usually have two centers of curvature, which are the centers of the intersecting spheres which form the lens surfaces. The centers are shown in this figure as point C. In lenses, the focus is not midway between the lens and the center of curvature as we found to be in spherical mirrors. Its position on the principal axis depends on the index of refraction of the lens. With a double convex lens of crown glass, the principal focus almost coincide with the center of curvature. Thus, the ratios of curvature and the focal lengths are almost equal. Optical center or O, the center of the lens. Principal axis or P, line joining the centers of curvature and passes through the optical center. Secondary ray or S, ray passing through the optical center but not parallel to the principal axis. Focal length or F, the distance between the focus and the optical center. How can we locate the image of an object formed by a lens? Lenses form images by refraction. To locate the image, use the following rays coming from point A on the object. Ray 1 is an incident ray parallel to the principal axis and is refracted through the focus. Ray 2 is an incident ray along the secondary axis which is not appreciably refracted as it passes through the optical center O of the lens. Using the ray method, let us construct locate and describe the image formed by thin converging lens at different positions of the object from the lens. When an object is at infinite distance, the image is a point at the principal focus. When an object is beyond twice the focal length, image is real, inverted, diminished, and located between F and 2F. When an object is at twice the focal length, the image is real, inverted, of the same size and located at 2F. If an object is between 2F and F, the image is real, inverted, bigger, and located beyond 2F. When an object is at the focus, refracted rays are parallel, therefore no image is formed. When an object is between the focus and the optical center, the image is virtual, erect, beaker, and located between 2F and F. Let us have the image formation in a concave lens. What kind of image is formed by concave lens? The ray method shown in this figure shows the image formed by a concave lens. It is always erect, virtual, and smaller in size. If this is your first time watching my video, Make sure you hit the subscriber button. Thank you for watching.